Good afternoon to all from the editorial board of BuildUp Portal. For the ones who are attending a BuildUp webinar for the first time, welcome. For our returning audience, thank you for renovating your interest. Just a brief explanation of what is BuildUp. BuildUp is the European platform in the field of energy efficiency in buildings. It is continuously updated and it represents one of the key sources of information on the topic of energy efficiency. You can register and become a member of the community. And you can also upload news, events, present a case study, results from a projects, and so on. I would like to invite you all to navigate the portal. In the Learn section, you will find all the podcasts of the past webinars, so it's possible to listen to all the previous presentations. At the end of this webinar, the link to the full presentation and the file to the PDF presentation will be made available in this section of the portal. It is a pleasure to host today's webinar entitled Transforming the Existing Building Stock, a Toolkit to Make a Building Smarter, which is organized in collaboration with H2020 Heart Project. I would like to invite you all to contribute and participate in this webinar. You can ask questions by typing in the box on the right side of the screen. All questions will be answered at the end of the presentations. However, feel free to type your questions anytime from now on. Now I would like to present the agenda of today's webinar and introduce the speakers. First, uh, Claudio Del Pero, Associate Professor at Politecnico di Milano, will present ab about a heart holistic approach for energy retrofit. Then Michela Buzzetti, co-founder and partner uh, ZH SRL, will present the application to a real case study in Italy. Then Chiara Di Pasquale, senior researcher at UREC Research, will discuss about energy performance and cost savings assessment through dynamic simulations. Last presentation will be made by Ercole Finocchietti, technical area manager from Acer Reggio Emilia, and he will reflect on the lessons learned from the hard toolkit on the construction site. Now I would like to leave the floor to Claudio Del Pero, and please, we can start the session. Good morning to everybody. I'm Claudio Del Pero, and I'm the project manager of uh, Heart Project. And uh, now I will do this presentation about the holistic approach to the energy retrofit we propose with our project. Just a quick introduction about the project. The uh, HART stands for Holistic Energy and Architectural Retrofit Toolkit. Uh, the duration of the project is 48 months plus six of extension to the uh, coronavirus situation. The project coordination is Professor Nicolo Aster from Politecno di Milano, which is the head of uh, our research unit. And here you can have some information about the website, the LinkedIn and Twitter account if you want to uh, keep uh, up to date about the, the project evolution. And uh, the consortium is quite large. We are 16 partners, um, of which there are main, main, uh, the main uh, uh, partners are small, medium enterprises, but we have also four academic entities, so research uh, partners. And uh, I would like to start my presentation uh, showing the, with this scheme the traditional approach to the energy rate of it. So usually we have a building owner which uh, appoints a designer to start uh, to think how to rate of it a certain building. The same building owner also usually asks the support of an investor to get the funding to uh, pay the rate of it intervention. Then the designer uh, start to analyze the building and to uh, consider different retrofit options, a certain number of retrofit options, because there is not uh, a, a unique solution for, for a certain building. And here we have the first question mark, because uh, how the designer select the best retrofit, retrofit option among all the alternatives, this is, this is a, this is a um, uh, decision support uh, phase that uh, usually is not transparent and not easy for the designer. But in any case, uh, we go to the next step. So the designer define the retrofit, a certain retrofit option that is composed by a lot of different technologies. 
these technolo technologies uh, have different manufacturers and different communication protocols. So the second question mark is how to ensure the proper interaction and integration among all the technologies. Also, if we assume the proper interaction, the proper integration, there is uh, another uh, step that is the simulation of the expected energy consumption of the retrofitted building. That is something usually carried out by the designer using a simulation tool. But the third question mark is how this expected energy, energy consumption is different from the actual saving and the actual payback time after the retrofit. This is this introduce let's say a big uncertainty uh, that uh, let's say put fear both in the building owner but also in the investor that uh, sees a big risk in putting the money into finance uh, a red a certain retrofit intervention. So in this context, the hard objectives are five. The first one is to develop a systemic and cost optical solution for the energy retrofit with the aim to ensure a payback uh, period lower than 15 years. The second objective is to develop, update and adapt innovative technologies for their systemic integration. So we are integrating existing component, just doing some uh, upgrade uh, of such technologies in order to ensure the uh, proper communication and integration among them. Objective number three is to foster the existing building smart upgrade, so to convert easily existing building into smart buildings. Number four, we want to support and improve the decision-making process. So we are providing a detailed prediction of the shippable cost performance benefit ratio of a certain building. So we are supporting and facilitating the decision-making process. Then objective number five is to promote energy efficiency financing. So we are making the buildings operating transparent. So we are um, uh, breaking down the risks and the, the uncertainties related to the energy requalification to increasing the attractiveness and the, of the energy rate of investments. So the application context of the project is central in Southern Europe, where we have to face not just heating problem, but also overheating and cooling issues. And the application target are multi-story residential buildings. So the one you can see in this picture that are uh, five uh, floors linear condominium buildings that are uh, very widespread uh, along Europe. And here you can see the structure of the toolkit. We have nine different components, a multifunctional external thermal insulation that can be uh, applied to the building, retrofit components and techniques for the existing builder to transform existing windows into high performance windows, universal PV tiles to generate renewable energy on site, obviously, a cloud platform that I will uh, describe later. Uh, DC smart fan coils are a specific component uh, working with direct current. They are designed to be installed in place of existing radiators using the same distribution pipes and provide both cooling, but also heating in every home, in every dwelling. Then we have a thermal storage in order to store um, renewable electricity in form of thermal energy. A battery pack that is highlighted in red because it's not a product of the uh, research activity, but we just integrate it from buying it uh, from the market. Then number eight, we have a dark current heat pump that is the main generator of the, of the toolkit. And last but not least, a multi-input, multi-output converter that manages all the electricity fluxes inside the, the building, inside the, the toolkit. And then we have the role of the cloud 
platform, the cloud platform is the brain of the system of the toolkit. Uh, it contains a simplified building energy model. This model is able to carry out uh, um, energy simulation before the rate of it and also to uh, control and manage the building after the rate of it. The cloud platform also has different uh, user interfaces, so it's able to interact with the construction stakeholder, with the founding stakeholder, with the management stakeholder, in both in the in the pre-rate of it situation, but also in the post-rate of it situation. The platform also um, interact with the users of the building and obviously with all the components, all the technologies installed in the building, but also there is a, a flux of information with external sources, for example, a weather forecast service or uh, the energy price and the status of the grid. The function of the platform in the decision-making phase is to identify the cost-optimal solution among all the retrofit alternatives. We perfectly know that the best solution is not the cheapest one, considering the investment cost, neither the most expensive one. We have to identify uh, a solution, a specific solution in the uh, cost optimal range. And the decision support system will do exactly this activity. After the retrofit, the same platform acts as an adaptive predictive energy management tool. So the idea is that the platform keep under control the real performance, the real energy consumption of the building and compare it with the expected trend, the expected energy consumption. Uh, when there is a, a big mismatch between the two trends, the platform immediate detect faults and anomalies. By this way, we are keeping under control the performance of the building and we are strongly reducing the risk for uh, all the stakeholders involved in the rate of fit activity. So thanks for the attention. Now I give the floor to Michela Buzzati for the second presentation. Uh, good morning everybody. Um, Earth uh, project uh, will be installed uh, within energy retrofit intervention in uh, two different case study buildings, uh, which were uh, selected to uh, be highly representative of the target application context. The first case study is found in uh, Italy and the second one in France, in a location near to Lyon. Both buildings are a social housing building. Uh, with, uh, and with this presentation, uh, I show you the documents of the construction project of the first Earth case study. The first Italian, excuse me, the first Italian case study is. Um, building located in Bagnolo in Piano, Reggio Emilia. Uh, the building owner is the municipality, but its management is carried out uh, by the Acer company, partner of the project. Uh, the building is a large multifamily house realized on uh, 1985 and distributed in two staircases on four floors. It has an overall gross volume of 2,340 uh, cubic meters and a net surface of about uh, 636 square meters, subdivided in 12 units. Divided in two uh, apartment sites, the largest of uh, 60 uh, square meters and the smallest of uh, 40 square meters. The, the building has a concrete structure envelope with brick cavity wall, floor and roof in all of block floor, and the windows uh, consist in a double simple glass and wood frame. The building is equipped, equipped with a centralized gas boiler, which provided energy for heating 
and a gas or electric boiler for uh, the domestic hot water needs for single units. In each room, the terminal are radiators and the climatic regulation is only present in the boiler room. Single split units provide cooling to part of the apartment. For the architectural intervention, a new insulating envelope and a redevelopment of intervention on the windows of the apartment was planned. The insulation intervention is a system with air gap thickness and an external insulation with peer sandwich panel. For uh, the windows uh, intervention, it was uh, decided to substitute the glass, uh, restore the opaque elements and insulated the shutter box. The choice of the intervention uh, on the window system was supported by file test. In fact, uh, in addition to the solution chosen, a second option was uh, considered. The second option differed from the first for the glassing intervention. In fact, uh, it proposed to add a glass to the existing uh, windows uh, instead of changing it. Here is indicated as uh, test uh, B. The second solution was not chosen because it provided to be less effective than the solution with the replacement of the entire glass. Um, as for uh, the mechanical system, the existing fuel powered generator has been replaced with a high deficiency heat pump. The reconstruction of the thermal power plants and the replacement of the terminal in the apartment was planned. The, the distribution system does not change and the regulation system will be placed in all individual rooms. Inside the thermal power plants, the project includes two heat pumps uh, at about 20 kilowatt uh, each, three tanks of 1,000 liters with phase change material, and a heat exchanger. In the apartment, the old radiator are changed with still smart fan coil in the living room and in the bedroom in order to provide both heating and cooling. And with a smart domestic hot water with heat pan system in the bathroom for the domestic uh, hot water needs. This slide uh, summarizes the functional scheme uh, of the mechanical uh, system and in particular um, the reused existing uh, part um, are highlighted in uh, orange and the redevelopment part uh, in blue. The MIMO uh, um, technical system with its battery represents the connection uh, of the electrical system and uh, has been a sort of in the attic. More electrical panels are then provided to optimize uh, the system. There is therefore a general panel and a dedicated one for both the MIMO and the technical room. The MIMO is connected to the two heat pumps located in the thermal uh, power plant on the ground floor and uh, to the smart fan coil line, which in turn are informally uh, distributed uh, as power on the four junction box. And finally, is connected to the photovoltaic system uh, too. The electrical uh, connection between all systems uh, has been identified and the cable duct uh, descent through the, the air gap thickness uh, of uh, the new insulation uh, system uh, and uh, all facade of uh, the building. Mm. 
The photovoltaic system uh, located on the south side uh, of the roof is the um, BIPV type uh, with an installed peak power of about 8.8 .8, uh, kilowatt and uh, cover an area of about 80 uh, square meters with uh, 152 modules. The redevelopment building, in addition to a new envelope, it will show a photovoltaic system on the roof and two external evaporators of the heat pump uh, placed in front of the access to the thermal power plant on the south facade. All other technical systems of her project are inside uh, of uh, the building. Finally, uh, one image with the building before and the rendering of the building after the intervention of the Tolkien Earth. Thank you for your attention. And I hand over to Chiara Di Pasquale, my colleagues of uh, EURAC uh, partner for the next uh, presentation. Hi, everybody. Thank you, Michela. Um, so yeah, we uh, we've heard um, from from Michela uh, a description of the intervention on the Italian uh, demo case. I will focus on the HVAC system that will be installed in the in the demo and uh, how it will work and advantages of using this kind of system. So Michela showed us um, a plant of the, the installation. I've uh, I reported here in a simpler in a simpler um, representation. Um, here we can see on the on the left, uh, yeah, on the in the bottom we have the heat pumps, the two heat heat pumps that uh, Michela mentioned it, uh, that are in charge of um, keeping. Um, yeah, the temperatures for heating cooling the, the whole system and the building. On the left, we have the thermal storages with the phase change materials. Uh, just, yeah, I've represented one for yeah, simpler um, representation. Then we can individuate here in, in, the, in between, in the middle, a uh, distribution circuit where we have the uh, centralized system, so for heat pump and storages, and here the circuit that goes to each uh, dwelling. Uh, in each uh, apartment, as we saw, we have the smartphone coils for heating and cooling uh, each uh, room of the apartment and the uh, smart domestic hot water boilers for, um, for water production, uh, hot water production how the system works. So we have the heat pumps that charge the uh, thermal storages for keeping the temperature here between the two uh, characteristic temperatures for uh, allowing the, the change uh, of phase uh, between solid and uh, liquid. And um, uh, so we have heat pumps that uh, charge these thermal storages and uh, the storages that keep the temperature within um, a certain range for the distribution circuit. The heat pump can also uh, work for keeping the temperature in the, in the distribution circuit. Um, we have uh, at Eurac, we have modeled this circuit uh, with the transis 18 um, for, uh, have, for running dynamic uh, energy simulations. So for studying the system in a dynamic uh, context and not for in a static um, conditions only. Why we do this? Um, we use dynamic simulations for understanding the behavior of the building together with the HVAC system that otherwise in a static condition is not possible to better understand how they interact. We use uh, dynamic simulations for 
assessing energy performance of the overall system and the building uh, together. We use dynamic simulations for testi testing basic control rules of how to uh, the, the system works and uh, we use the simulations for um, understanding the improvements that uh, advanced control strategies can bring to the to the system uh, with first uh, results we got from the um, these simulations we um uh, okay no first uh yeah some examples of what we can do with this simulation is for example uh, looking at the graphs on the on the left uh, and we look at the um, bars the yellow and the orange bars these represent uh, thermal losses through the pipes the pipes of the distribution circuit we can see that choosing one um one control um, control mode or another one we have different temperatures on this distribution circuit that are the the purple uh, points and as a consequence we have different thermal losses uh, through the pipes um, yeah so we and uh, another example on the on the right we uh, we can understand uh, how energy moves through the system. So these are the lines. These lines represent energy on the circuit, for example, in the distribution circuit, on the source side of the fan coils, or uh, energy uh, provided by the heat pump or exchanged with the um, thermal storages. So um, the first uh, step for using dynamic simulations is to understand these systems, uh, the, the, how the system works, also because it's not, it's a complex system, so a system where we have several components there. Uh, from the first uh, simulation results, we, we got to, um, to um, yeah, we, we have to say that we still don't have monitoring data so this, the, the model is not calibrated and um, yeah it's first first results we have the performances we got that the performances of the overall system so the the hvac system together with the building um, the, this performance is in line with a centralized heat pump system uh, so having only a heat pump that um, provides energy to, to the um, distribution circuit in the building. However, uh, this kind of system uh, have, uh, has several advantages. Uh, one of these is the modularity of the system. This makes this uh, the system applicable to uh, several um, buildings with different sizes and different kind of system of buildings because uh, yeah, the, we have just to size the heat pump and the thermal storages for different buildings and then we have um the the smartphone calls in the in each room so this the system can be applied to a small building a multifamily house but also to a big multifamily house then this system it uh, can be installed in uh, existing buildings and so this is a low intrusive system as it exploits the radiator distribution circuit so it's not needed to um, do external uh, um, additional works on the distribution circuits because same pipes can be used. And uh, an important point and very uh, key point of these systems is that it's possible to split uh, heat cool production with the energy use. As we have the, a, generation system, a generation device that produces heat and cool and saves and stores these in, um, in the thermal storages, and then this energy is used to the, uh, to the, uh, to the building when, uh, when uh, needed, when required. 
Um, after, yeah, so the uh, first considerations on how this uh, system works, we've observed that, for example, in the uh, early morning, there is a peak of use of energy because for, for example, for heating up the, the system, it's this uh, blue and gray curve. And while the uh, photovoltaic production is uh, along the uh, along the the day, uh, it's the, um, the the green line. With the control, we are going to um, to, to to develop for improving the the use of the system. We want to uh, move this peak along the day in a way that we can exploit PV production as much as possible. Um, and so uh, one of the points I said uh, of uh, why we use um, dynamic simulations is uh, for testing control uh, rules, control strategies, so how we control this system, and this is an application. So going to the conclusions, um, the system here we implement is similar to a heat pump um, heat pump system, but we uh, we define this as a flexible system. Uh, what we uh, we mean with flexible system? We have a flexible use of electric uh, energy or of electricity because we can um, use in a flexible way the heat and cool production uh, from the heat pump and we can um, regulate this uh, in accordance to the uh, photovoltaic production. Uh, implementing some rules that uh, better exploits renewable energy uh, production. Uh, flexible use of energy from the building because uh, we, we, thanks to the storages and thanks to the uh, use of thermal storages here, we can uh, shave the, the peaks uh, and uh, um, avoid to have all at the same time, in the same time of the day. And as I said, we can uh, maximize the, um, the use of renewable energies, thanks to the, again, the, the split of each circuit and the, the, the coupling of the circuits and uh, of the production with the uh, consumption. Thanks for your attention. And now I leave uh, the floor to Ercole Finocchietti, uh, Technical Area Manager of Archer uh, Regimilia. Hello, good morning. So uh, I'm talking about uh, um, the building site uh, and the um, what, uh, what are the lessons from uh, the, the, realiz the realization of this system in a really study, in a really rare case study? Uh, I'm supervising, uh, uh, I'm supervising the installation uh, of the system. Uh, first thing I, I think uh, is uh, important to say that I, I think. Uh, I, I, I appreciate if and it's appreciable the possibility to uh, intervene intervening on a building uh, that was always inhabited and then I think that uh, the flexible and controlled energy management uh, should lead the savings uh, uh, that go beyond the simply improving the generation system because we we, we are going to to managing all uh, all the, um, the energy consumption of the system. Then, I'm sorry. We are uh, began we, we began the the building site uh, at about uh, at the end of September uh, with the three uh, different uh, company. Uh, 
building company, um, a construction company, an electrical company, and a, and a um, thermical uh, company. Uh, First, uh, before before uh, the the begin of the of the of the operation, uh, we, as uh, Michael said, we we do the windows renovation activities. We so uh, activity was um, ma made in um, in a warm season, so we can uh, uh, we can uh, operate it on uh, in in the in the building site. Uh, uh, out of the, the dwellings uh, with, without uh, uh, problems for the residents. Then the the other lesson, the other uh, important uh, activity uh, that, I, that, that we find was uh, related to the, the modular facade uh, system. The modular facade system uh, needs uh, um, a lot of, uh, of uh, operation before uh, start. We, we, we made the pull-off the pull test because the system is a, a um, mechanical coating of the, of the building. So we need to, to know how uh, the wall, uh, the behavior of the wall uh, for the connection. Uh, then we have we, we made uh, uh, with Garcia Rama. Garcia Rama is the partner. Uh, made a, 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 a relief where we are tracing the, the the line guide for the installation. Then. Uh, all the installation uh, parts uh, were delivered to the to the building site with the uh, two transportation. Then, before we, we before we we go to to see how the system works, uh, a little bit uh, words about the thermal power station. The thermal power station is uh, uh, the more uh, important uh, system for this renovation. We need to to build up uh, uh, two two bays uh, for the installing the heat pump. Uh, the a system. Uh, a system of uh, a connection with uh, specific and particular uh, pipes. This is the the old uh, the old uh, power station uh, that was uh, carried away. And then this is the uh, the new. A look at the new system and the power station. We have the thermal storage for cold and and hot water. The piping, uh, the piping system with two uh, two circulation pump. And here we can see uh, this this one. That this one is uh, the backup power uh, generator that is needed to. In case of uh, fault of the thermal thermal um, the heat pump that you see here, the heat pump is composed uh, with two unit internal units and two external units, each one uh, of uh, 20 kilowatt uh, power. Uh, this is the particular of the. Um, the, the water disp disp disposal system uh, of condensation. Then, uh, for uh, uh, for connecting the the system, uh, the uh, the heat pump uh, in uh, the dwellings uh, with the system with the MIMO and with all the uh, all the system, we as it, as shows before, we we make uh, a 
grid of uh, can canalization, electrical pipes uh, that goes from the attic to the the single the the house, the singular house and the singular heat pumps. Uh, you can see also the um, the pipes for the connection from the um, photovoltaic system to the uh, heat pump and the system. It is a, a general uh, picture. You can see a, a thermal isolation panel here, and he, these, these are the, the guide for uh, installing the panels. So uh, just uh, unlike what is shown, before the MIMO is not uh, uh, placed in the attic uh, due to the very uh, very big heat, uh, weight of the system, uh, so we we decided uh, the last uh, the last week to install the MIMO down in the in the the ground floor uh, for a better. Uh, uh, utilization. Then we proceed with uh, e the installation of the thermal insulation. You can see uh, in the, the the work in progress, and then the the other system. Uh, you you remember we, we talk about two different system insulation system. One for the facade, one for the balcony. This is the one for the balcony. On the roof, uh, we we do a new. We made a new access to the roof, uh, and a new lifeline for uh, for 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 work in uh, in safety mode. Next step uh, on the roof is uh, replace the the tiles, the actual tiles with a new um, photovoltaic tiles. Then, this is uh, how is uh, the the situation of the building site. I have to talk about lessons. Uh, the lessons uh, about this system um, at, uh, at today is there uh, is a big problem of um, logistic uh, and uh, in. Uh, relative uh, simple uh, way to do the the, the work uh, because uh, I, I as i can as i see i i said before the 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 building uh, was always uh, inhabited uh, with uh, without problems from the resident and uh, we are doing uh, i think a, a very good job and uh, i I I'm waiting uh, for the the results of this uh, in, this uh, this work because I hope there's a, there was there was a, no, there will will be more um, more greater the more greater than when what we expect. Um, so then at the end of the thermal season uh, or as soon as possible we can. Uh, uh, install the the heating system in the house now is uh, too cold for operate so i think uh, um, i no no more no more uh, things to do to say you to you and uh, thank you for your attention thank you uh, so we finished uh, a little bit before the schedule. Uh, however, we opened the Q&A. So feel free to send your questions. I already have uh, some here. Um, so what are the values of primary energy consumption before and after the interven intervention? The cost and the payback time? So. 
anyone can answer, please. Yes, Claudio Del Peo speaking. So, <clears throat> as I mentioned at the beginning, the target payback time for, for the toolkit is within 15 years, without any subsidy. So, the idea is that uh, uh, if there are no uh, particular difficulties related to the intervention context, the, the, the payback time of the whole heart toolkit stay below 15 years. And um, uh, the, about the reduction of the primary energy demand, uh, we estimated for the two case study to reduce by 80 to 90 percent compared to the current situation. So the idea is that the toolkit uh, allow a reduction on average about 80 percent if you apply it on, on an existing building without any kind of insulation, with uh, an outdated heating system and so on. So a, a building similar to the two case studies we are retrofitting. Thank you. Um, can you quantify in terms of energy or cost savings the advantages of a flexible system? Uh, yeah, let me hear. I I can reply. Um, as uh, Claudio just uh, just said, uh, yeah, he mentioned the the savings and that uh, the whole uh, solution uh, can uh, can bring. Uh, looking at the um, uh, the single, um, looking at the, the yeah the single uh, systems so or the, the advantages of using flexi flexible systems uh, that depends depends on uh, how the, the the system is done how um, the the system is used and which are the um, available renewable energies uh, to be used. And uh, the whole um, yeah, savings and advantages lies on the uh, on the control of the system and how um, the, the 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 demand and the the use of energy can manage it. Um, from yeah, very uh, simple uh, assessment, we can. Um, at an additional uh, 15 to 20 percent, at least, of uh, additional cost um, and uh, energy savings by exploiting the flexibility of, of the system. Thank you. Uh, okay, another question. Uh, which part of the inter interventions of the case study works and components is covered by the H2020 project funding? Is it 100%? Um, yes, I can reply. So the, the, the funding, if I got the question, is uh, variable depending on the type of uh, partner of the project. So for all the research entities is 100%. Uh, uh, so um, all, all the activities carried out by the research partner is covered, fully covered for all the other partners. So also for the building owners and the industrial partner that are paying for the uh, technologies and the rate of it works, the funding is 70%. Uh, Thank you. Another question. Um, are the roof surfaces, surfaces insulated? No. Um, I, no I replace. Uh, ah. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, the, the roof pitches were not insulated. But the last floor between the apartment and the attic was thermally insulated. Thank you. Thank you. 
Do you have something to add, Arcole, or? No, no, to all okay. Okay, all right. Uh, so there's another question coming right now. What is the latitude of the location, please? We are in uh, Reggio Emilia for the Italian case study and uh, in Lyon for the French case study. So we are, let's say, at similar latitudes around uh, uh, 45 degrees, but uh, with slightly different climates because in Reggio Emilia we have uh, warmer and more humid summer, while in Lyon, let's say that uh, the, the, the main problem is the winter time. But in any case, we are more or less at, at the same latitude. Thanks. Uh, another question um, about monitoring. Is this foreseen in the long term? Uh, again, I can reply to this question. So we have installed the monitoring system in the 2K study building to uh, have a detailed view before the retrofit. So we started uh, two years ago to monitor the first case study. Uh, let's say a little bit more than one year ago, the monitoring phase of the second case study. So we have a comprehensive view of the status of the, build the buildings before the retrofit. And obviously the monitoring is continuing during the retrofit work. And after the retrofit using the um, the sensor that are installed in, inside the, the different components of the toolkit. In particular, in each smart pan coil that in, is installed in each room of the building, there are a lot of sensor to uh, control, to sorry, to monitor the temperature of the air, the relative humidity. And so uh, we are keeping absolutely under control uh, the building also after the installation of the toolkit. Thank you. So uh, there are no more questions. So I would say that we can close the Q&A. Um, thank you to all the panelists and for the audience and uh, have a nice day. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. You too.